Welcome to White and Woods. Uh, this is the first in our virtual walks. This one is being led by Dr. Keith Kirby and we'll be looking at woodland flowers. Welcome to Whiteham Woods. I'm afraid the woods are closed at the moment, but we'll take you on a virtual tour around some of my favourite sites. There's a map showing where they, how they are distributed, and they're called Whiteham Woods in the plural because in fact they are several different sections of woodland that have become joined together over the years through new growth. And the differences in their history affect how they are composed, what plants grow there, and probably also what animals are there as well. And we'll see some of those differences as we walk around. We've entered the wood through the Gibson Gate. It's named after Charlie Gibson, who was a researcher here for many years, and one of the most knowledgeable people about the woods that there's been probably since Charles Elton, who was a researcher here in the early 50s and 60s. As you come into the woods, then on the right is this rather unusual tree. Here. It's unusual in its form, also because it's a hornbeam. And hornbeams are quite scarce in this part of England. They're more in the south and east of the country. And we think it's probably one that was established or planted by the fifth earl sometime in the early 19th century because he introduced a number of other trees to the woods about that time. But as you can see it's got a very twisty bark and in fact growing in one crack within it is a small ash tree. So it appears at times in the summer that it's got two types of leaf. This is a fantastic bank of primroses, there's some violets out and the bluebells are just coming over the bank and they will in a couple of weeks time be showing really nicely. And this bank is significant because it's part of the old boundary of the medieval wood, the great wood of Whiteham. And it's interesting that these plants are on the bank but if we were to turn round and look the other side, on the other side of the road, well, there's the odd primrose, the odd bluebell, but nothing like the abundance that we've got on this bank and in the woods to, the, to my right, the ancient woodland, the medieval wood. Not all plants have obeyed the rules, as it were, and stayed in the ancient woodland. The dog mercury here has spread, which is something it doesn't always do in other parts of the country. But overall, there is a richer flora, more plants, more abundance in the old woodland. Here we can still see the remains of the old bank, in this case with some anemones on it. But also you can see the, where they've had to fell some of the ash here. This is because of the ash dieback, which is affecting the trees, and because these are close to the path, the road up to the chalet, then they've been cut so they won't fall across the road and cause problems or indeed injure someone, possibly. And this is just part of the work that needs to be done in response to the disease. But in most of the woods, the ash trees will just be allowed to live or die depending on how tolerant they are of the disease and we will be following the impact on the flowers, the invertebrates, the birds, the mammals as that happens. Oh, so moving seamlessly round.
the big oak behind me grew up on Whiteham Common in the 19th century or possibly a bit earlier when it was still open grazing so it has lots of low branches because they grew while it had no competition. Subsequently all this younger growth has come in and is now shading the big old oak out and eventually they will overtop it and could kill it through shading. So what we've done here is to fell some of the trees immediately next to the oak to give it a bit more space and hopefully that will keep it going for another 50 to 100 years by which time some of the smaller younger oaks that are coming up in the wood will have developed similar sorts of characteristics and be suitable for the deadwoods beetles and flies that currently live in this old veteran. In the early 19th century, the fifth earl planted a lot of beech on the top of Whiteham Hill. And 200 years later, some of them were getting a bit old and fell over during a big storm. One of them fell over. gap was created, ash came up in abundance and is now two or three times my height, as well as one or two sycamore, uh, one or two beech saplings as well. Unfortunately the ash is now succumbing to the ash dieback so we don't quite know whether any of it will ever reach the canopy but at least there is a, one beech amongst this lot here which looks as though it will form the replacement for that tree that the fifth earl caused to be planted here. Scattered through the woods are posts, orange topped posts or yellow, more yellowy topped posts, which are on roughly 100 metre intervals. And they were set out in 1974 by a team of dedicated surveyors to mark the grid points through the woods. And then at every other post there is a vegetation plot which is just offset from the post so you won't be trampling on it. And that, those plots have been recorded at five times now since 1974 and so we've got a measure of how the woods have been changing, what plants have been increasing, what plants have been decreasing, and how the trees have been growing. And we will use that as our baseline for looking at the changes following ash dieback. This stone commemorates Hazel Fennell, the only daughter of Raymond Fennell, who donated the woods to the university in 1943. She unfortunately died quite young and hence the woods came to the university rather than perhaps being passed on to her. She was quite an unusual woman for a time and um, very artistic and also very interested in animals so it's appropriate that these woods, also known as the Woods of Hazel, uh, commemorate her in that way. It's always difficult to know exactly when the bluebells are going to be fully out. This year we're still a little bit shy of a couple of weeks for the full glory of them, but you can start to see how they will look. And under this beechwood it's particularly going to be brilliant because there's nothing else under the shade of the beech to distract your eye and it will just be a sea of blue in about two weeks time. This stand is interesting because it's only about 60 or so years old. This was part of Radbrook Common 
during the Second World War, parts of it were ploughed. In the First World War, parts of it were dug as practice trenches for the troops that would be going out to France shortly afterwards. And yet here we are now, 60 odd years later, developing beechwood with this lovely carpet of bluebells, a blue buzzed haze as Gerard Manley Hopley would call it. Everybody knows that Wordsworth wrote a poem about daffodils. What's not often so well known is that he also wrote one about celandines. And if I get the quote right, it's, there is a little plant that's mine, tis the little celandine. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, daffodils. This is one of my favourite plants, Herb Paris. Later in the year it's, it'll be a little bit higher with four leaves on the top and then a little flower in the middle there which develops into a dark blue-black berry. It was first described by a herbalist, William Turner, in the 17th century from a wood in Northumberland. And he describes the wood, he describes, gives the name of it, and that wood is still there. And a couple of years ago, I went up to the wood, and the Herb Paris is still there as well. Now, we don't know how long this patch has been here in Whiteham, but who knows, perhaps for two or three hundred years, like the patch in Northumberland. Hope you enjoyed that walk. Future walks will include badger watching, a historic view of Whiteham and also a dawn chorus. <laughs>